Okay, layout discussion episode three, mail call number five, and the modular layout. This one I wrote a script for because this package has a couple things in it that are special. And I wanted to give some background information on. It will sound a little like an episode of Real Railroads, but I'm not back into doing that series right now. Any ideas of subjects to cover for future episodes, comment below. This package is from Model Train Stuff. I have it upside down because the shipping information is on the other side, so I put it upside down, so I didn't have to black out anything. I was going to order, do another order from Yankee Dabbler, but I found something cheaper at MTS that I needed just as much. But before I open this, I will talk about the modular layout. The modular layout, which will hopefully, after these last couple packages, I will get going on building it. It's in, the it's in the 50s up here. It's 51 in this room right now. Not so cold to not do some work and shouldn't cause too much shifting of material. This layout is to be purely prototypical. The business in downtown Warsaw, New York from the time of the railroad's arrivals in the 1850s and then 1870s, freight had to be hauled up or down the hills on the east and west side of the, of Warsaw. This was before the automobiles and moving freight involved teams dragging freight up from the Warsaw Elevator Company and other businesses up to the then Buffalo and Rochester, Buffalo, Rochester and Pittsburgh Freight Depot off Park Street on the west on the East Hill. Uh, I, there also was freight capabilities on the Erie Railroad on the West Hill. I didn't mention that here, but the branch line was Buffalo, Rochester, and Pittsburgh. The railroad was approached and decision was made to build a switchback branch line down, down the East Hill into the valley floor in 1912. And to build another freight depot on Washington Street just east of South Main Street. This freight depot was, was built with four doors for loading on the street side with, large, with a large office and three tracks. Two curved by the depot, while a third went straight along the creek a few feet east of the other two and, cur and served a loading ramp. This ramp was a style that came up and alongside the tracks. Up, this, up like this. And then turned around the end, allowing side loading or end or end side unloading or end unloading. Another spur served the Warsaw Elevator Company south of the depot. There were other industries on the spur, on the branch line, including a piano factory, lantern factory, lumber mill, and possibly more. Or lumber yard, I should say, not lumber mill. Industries did change slightly over the years, and I have to get a hold of the various maps through the years to tell what was what and when. This layout will be made up of modulars around four feet long and two and a half feet deep, built with two inch extruded foam board framed by one by four boards and supported by two by three legs. The switchback up the hill I can't model with the space available, but I will have a staging yard to represent the switchback arranged so the cars will be pulled out and then shoved to the industries on the branch. This layout should use BRMP and BNO steam, which I will event which I will get eventually, but for now it will ha have to use too much I have to utilize whatever I have on hand. I have acquired a bunch of era appropriate rolling stock, so I won't have to use too much from other after 1960. But for now the priority will be getting the scenery and structures to be prototypical. This might require some help from the community. I have looked through a lot of kits and I just don't have the eye to spot kits that can be combined or altered into the current into the correct appearance. Quite a bit might have to be outsourced to others who are more capable in kit bashing or scratch building. I can't really afford to do that and it will make progress slower, but I would rather not mess up something made to be a historical display. This okay, now I get into opening the package. Knife. Now, unfortunately, still have one complaint I have. If you heard that, packages shouldn't shake like that. 
that's a little bit of an annoyance, especially when it's $175 worth of stuff in here. shake around but is decently packed I guess not too great there's a lot of space between this bubble wrap and the stuff inside there's enough for like one more box in there yeah hopefully nothing's broken okay uh, here uh, is a Micromark Universal Cab Holster. This I might not need for the modular layout, but I will need a whole lot for the larger layout eventually, so I bought this. The item is still on my wish list because I will need more. Um, I bought actually bought this one because I wasn't sure if one came with the NCE system. One doesn't, so I will need it for the modular layout. Okay. This is a main central box car. Built in 1947. I had this on my wish list but decided to buy it myself. In fact, three of the things in this package were off my wish list at Model Train stuff. This was purchased for the modular layout, which represents an industrial branch of the BRP and B&O circa 1920-1960, which I just spoke about. This will primarily be used for the freight house that was on that line. This is off my wish list and it was the last one MTS had. Uh, this is AKD. Let's take this out of the package. Light, the light, the lamp next to me is reflecting too much, and down. this is a beautiful model. See if I can get some more light in this subject. There we go. This is just beautiful. There's, uh, can you see it? Yep. There's the air hose right here. The stirrups are just fragile. Top walkway is see through. Doors slide nice. Um, this is so fragile that this bends when I just touch it like that. This is amazing. This is the best detail car I've ever seen. There's the bottom detail. KD's nice. Nice detail. It's a little light though, but I don't know. But you got the tree symbol. There you go, Rick. If you're a subscriber, I think you are. There's a Rick Bailey on there. <laughs> So that is the KD car. I'll pause this video for a second. That is nice. I like I like the jewel case. The jewel case feels a little fragile. I mean, when I was unclicking it, I was scared I was going to break the case. But uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to save that for last. Some bubble wrap. Mm. Sparky likes peanuts, but uh, those have been outlawed in New York State. Okay, now this is a kit made by Blair Line. A freight ramp was at the freight depot in Warsaw, in Warsaw, New York. It was larger than this one. As I said, the prototype turned around the end of the spur. But I could probably scratch build or kit bash two kits together to make it the right size. This is my first structure kit, and the description said it's a good level for beginners. Let 
and eh, kind of daunting, but the, at least the decking is one piece. I mean, it looks like you could cut it into pieces, but I'm just going to leave it that way. I have to cut this stuff out. I'm uh, probably doing a video on this someday. Unfortunately, as everyone who pays attention knows, I can't do it on a live stream, which I would love to do. But I only have my cell phone data, which won't provide enough speed to even participate in a live, st live stream at home. Now this I was wondering if it even was in the package because it didn't weigh that much. But, because the package didn't seem to weigh that much, but it's in there. And here is another special item. This one is off this one off my wish list. Now I had looked and looked and tried to decide what I wanted to get first. And I can't get this out of the I don't want this come out. Hang on. Um, I had looked at a few locomotives. There was one other one that I considered getting. There was two other. There was one of Yankee Dabbler I considered getting, which is the same railroad as this. And then there was a. Conrail GP40-2 uh, mile train stuff, which was about the same price as the other unit from this railroad that I was thinking about, Yankee Dabbler. But unfortunately, I because I want everything on the layouts to be what actually ran there, including road number and paint scheme. So, unfortunately, the one that they had was in Conrail quality paint scheme, Sparky. It wasn't in the action, in the, uh, can in the, can opener paint scheme, can roll paint scheme. So that, unfortunately, I could not get, and you just got a glimpse of the locomotive, so you probably already guessed what railroad it is. Uh, otherwise, I would have gotten a can roll locomotive first, just because you love it, Sparky. Because I definitely need a lot of Conrail and remodeling Conrail from 1980 to, well, sort of 1980 to. 1999, mainly 1992 to 1991, 99. But this is this this is a Bachman locomotive. Now a lot of people don't not like Bachman, but it's affordable. Uh, this is New York Susquehanna and Western SD40-2 3018. This one does not have sound like the one I considered a Yankee Dabbler. That was an Atlas B40-8. Also painted for New York Test Plan and Western, but had sound. NYSW 3018 was built as Southern 3267 with a high nose. It was placed, it was passed in Norfolk Southern as the same as the same number, and then was sold to BDLX, but retained the road number. It sat in Syracuse in 2003 and 2000, 2005, and then in 2006 it appeared in New York Test NYSW paint and a low nose. I had planned on buying that Atlas B40-8 from Yankee Dabbler, but it was $199. And even with the discount, I got this stuff for cheaper. This was total, as I said, 175 This was $99. I mean, $99, you don't pass that up. I will eventually uh, replace the decoder on this with one with sound. I plan on ordering all track. Okay, I'm not going to mess with getting that open because it's sticking. It's supposed to stick to this bottom part, but it's sticking to the top part. But we'll get some nice up close. I mean, Bachman has definitely upstepped their quality here. I mean, that's that's a good looking locomotive. Can sort of read that you can even sort of read the builder plate. I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice looking locomotive. I mean, it's definitely it's definitely worth more than ninety nine dollars.
Um, I wanted my first locomotive to have, have sound, so when I use the test track for the first time, it would be a sound unit, but I don't want to spend too much stimulus money in case it is needed later for something else. I've updated the model train stuff wish list, and I uh, and I tried to update the one at Yankee Dabbler, but for some reason, the add to wish list option wasn't available. The links to both, if I can get to the Yankee Dabbler wish list link to copy, it will be below in the on the off chance anyone wants to buy something for Christmas. I think I will consider these items my Christmas presents myself. So that ends the mail call. I don't know when there will be another. There will probably be some layout updates in the future. Depends on the life and such. Right now I have not been able to get the test track working. I'm having some opposition, as I said in the other mail call, to getting the test track working. Um, I have uh, I've said before that I have been struggling with P I have said in uh, live chats and such that I have a serious problem with PTSD. I've had PTSD for two years, and my support system is not being supportive. They're being the opposite of supportive. They're doing exactly what they should not be, and that is two-thirds of my support system. My doctor is wonderful, but uh, the other two people in my support system are not being wonderful. They are making life extremely difficult and preventing me from doing stuff I need to do to maintain a mental health, a good mental health, so, and preventing me from doing my hobby, which is important for, for PTSD. It's important that you get involved in a hobby and do some stuff, and eventually at some point I'll maybe do a video if people want to know about it. I have no objection to talking about what has caused the PTSD or how it has affected my life. I feel that the more people talk about it, the more that they are, the more people are helped by it. And some people can't talk about it. I can talk about it. I get a little bit more upset, but not that much. And then, so that is something you want to know about. Absolutely, I will tell about it. I was thinking about doing a video of it anyway. So, but that's the mail call. That's the stuff I've gotten. I have my first locomotive. I just need to be able to run it. And that's getting the, I still have all the stuff, all of my older stuff on the test track. I don't even have any newer stuff. There's some newer stuff out, out there. And there's some newer stuff right here. But this will probably go back downstairs because it is 51 up here, and even though that's not that cold, some people might say that's cold. I know you people in Florida will think, oh my gosh, 51 is cold, but we keep our house at 62. It is like, six, it, the thermostat set at like 62 right now, and it's like 64 downstairs, 51 upstairs. Not that bad. Uh, I'm perfectly comfortable. My hands are a little chilly, but that's it. Uh, anyway, let's enjoy, and I hope you enjoyed it. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will hopefully have those wish lists in the description. So you can, if you want to buy the Binghamton Western Model Railroad a Christmas present, you absolutely can. Track. If you do not want to buy, do not put any pressure to people to buy $250 locomotives on my wish list. Locomotives are ridiculously priced. But there's plenty of track. I have every track pack that they have. On the wish list, including the 100 piece Code 83 one, which is like $200. And, but I have 10 piece sets on there too. If you want to do it, to have switches, whatever. If you don't, I don't really expect anything, but if you want to, go ahead. I won't object. <laughs>